There was a rumor a couple of weeks ago that they were selling, wasn't it? Uh, was it the US government and Mt. Gox were supposed to be selling a couple of weeks ago and the market got a bit spooked then? Um, yeah. And then yesterday, yeah, it was, they were supposedly selling around sort of just, just shy of 10K Bitcoin or something. So, I mean, even, yeah, even just seeing it move, even just the rumor of it's enough to, uh, to tank the market. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Guy from Coin Bureau sharing his insights and predictions for the future of Bitcoin and the crypto market in 2023. According to Guy, despite some positive momentum, the current sentiment surrounding Bitcoin suggests that there may be another market crash looming this year. His analysis suggests that Bitcoin could experience significant downside, even reaching a bottom price of $10,000. Let's get right into the interview as Guy discusses the latest update for Bitcoin and what we can expect in the crypto market in 2023. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. If you hold an asset, as you say, the US government, it needs money. It's got, it's got this debt ceiling issue. Um, so yeah, I think they would probably look not to not to sort of cause chaos in the market. I, I kind of feel even even though they don't like crypto, I wonder how willing they would be to sort of cause carnage in any particular market right now. So I think it would probably be sold fairly strategically and um, perhaps they'd sort of try and sell it a bit closer to the top because I think they uh, I think they're getting a reputation now for I mean they've they've taken a huge amount of losses. They, they've sold a fair bit already, haven't they? And they've yeah. well below uh the sort of prices they could get for it so um yeah they're gonna have to answer to the to the taxpayer for that one and i do wonder as well you know if they were to sell let's say they were to sell strategically as i think they as i think they probably would maybe in sort of 10k batches over time maybe they'd sort of look to dca out of it in a way but um i wonder would they sell on the open market or would they be more likely to do you know when for instance when tim draper uh, bought all his bitcoins a few years ago. They, he did that via auction, didn't he? I think it was was it the Marshall Service uh, auctioned Something it off, like and and he snapped it up at at a fairly decent discount. So I right. kind of feel that they probably do something like that, or just do some OTC trades via, you know, coin uh, Coinbase or whoever it would be. So. Um, I don't see them sort of really looking to take it down that way, but it is an interesting kind of sword of Damocles to have uh, sort of dangling over the market. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, who knows? Like maybe if the price does pump and the, <laughs> the debt ceiling issues are still a problem, maybe maybe they'll be forced to sell. Who knows? Well, once that trust goes, that's it. The dollars the dollar is going to is going to go into decline. <laughs> and I guess you could I guess you could argue that the dollar is already in decline. But um, yeah, it's it was it was kind of an extraordinary thing to see, and I guess it kind of it just exposes the fiat system for what it is, doesn't it? You know, the the, the only thing, the only thing backing the dollars in circulation really is people's trust in the U.S. government. In this situation that we're at at the moment, where we've had sort of okay, we've had a market, the market's gone up uh, over over the course of this year so far, but I do sort of feel that perhaps all this craziness happening at the moment is kind of maybe draining the last of the speculation out of the crypto market. At least I, I hope it is. So perhaps that could set the stage for a more a more sort of sustainable rally in the long term. You know, we just need to we just need to go through another meme coin cycle to sort of cleanse everything and then we can all move forward into the light. I don't know. That said, I mean, I'm just, I'm really just keeping my powder dry for when they put out Hide the Pain Harold coin and I can, I can ape in on that. To support his predictions, Guy draws a correlation between Bitcoin and the stock market, which he believes will also experience a decline in 2023. In light of this, he emphasizes the importance of having a long-term strategy in place, particularly for those who see Bitcoin as the gold standard in the crypto market. As he closely scrutinizes recent market trends, Guy notes that the next few months are likely to be critical for Bitcoin, and investors should be aware that these market conditions carry a high level of risk. I think they'll want to probably see just how it plays out with rates held at this at this level. And I mean, Jerome was was keen was sort of keen to say in his press conference, wasn't he? Obviously, that the next decision will depend on the data, and obviously, as I said, that data is coming out just before the meeting. So uh, I, I imagine it'll be a fairly it'll be a fairly long meeting that they'll have. 
But he did also, didn't he? He did kind of leave the door open for further rate hikes. And I think probably it, it's quite a useful thing for the Fed to have in its armory, this sort of the possibility of another rate hike just sort of hanging like a, again, like a sort of Damocles, I guess, over the over the market and just perhaps from, you know, perhaps to kind of just temper expectations, stop people getting too carried away and, you know, just have that thing up their sleeve. So, yeah, um, my guess would be that uh, that rates will probably stay the same at the next meeting, um, depending, of course, uh, on, uh, on, on the data that comes in before then. Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of looking ahead, I mean, it, interest rate futures are now sort of pointing towards, uh, you know, a cut sort of coming fairly soon. And I think I saw, I think uh, there's a, around a sort of 37% chance of a cut by July. So it seems to be that that is that that could be on the cards. But yeah, I don't think we'll see a cut next month for sure. I think that I think probably stick to the plan, hold them there and and see what happens. And I guess see how the markets react to that. I'm, you know, I imagine as it will probably be what's expected. It's going to be up to 2% if I remember rightly. So they, you know, they can't necessarily all all ape in uh, and go nuts. But yeah, they'll be allowed to hold, I think it's 2% um, of their reserves in, uh, in, in Bitcoin and or I think it's other cryptos as well, but um, certainly Bitcoin. So yeah, and obviously, I think they could well be, you know, what's to say that they're not already accumulating that in advance? I don't know that that's pure speculation on my part. But um, Sounds dubious. yeah, I think that could I, that could dubious. be an interesting factor. And obviously, early 2025. Mm. Yeah, that could that's that's certainly something that that's certainly a date that I've I've got in my got in my sights. It's tempting to think that obviously the, the we've had this kind of mini banking if, compared to 2008. We've had this mini banking crisis recently, and uh, and that's been good for Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin's Bitcoin's use has been proved this hedge against the uh, against the the financial system. So it's tempting to think that perhaps if it had been around already established when two thousand and eight came, that could have potentially been been <coughs> rocket fuel for it. You know, here is here is the clearest clearest demonstration you could need. That uh, that we need an asset that is that is outside of the mainstream financial system because look at it, it's crumbling around our ears. It would have to have been very well established by that point because uh, I think if it had been still fairly new, then I think it would have been too fragile and and people's people's attention would have been elsewhere. And yeah, as you say, there would have been a handful of true believers who really understood it, who really got it, and would have just hoovered up the the rest of the supply. But um, it's an interesting thing to consider. It's um, I guess thinking about it, I, I tend to subscribe to that philosophy of sort of everything kind of happens for a reason, you know, there's, it, yeah. and it's, I guess we should think ourselves as lucky that Bitcoin came along when it did, I think, and especially looking back at its early years, you know, it was so touch and go at times, whether it would make it, and it was only because of a, a handful of these people who truly believed in it, that it did. And I think it got, you know, lucky in, in a lot of respects. So. <laughs> I think probably it's just as well it was still in Satoshi's head when uh, when 2008 came because I think that prob more likely would have been cataclysmic for it. When it comes to economic analysis, Guy believes that the U.S. economy's performance has a significant impact on global markets, especially cryptocurrency. He points out that the crashes we've seen were necessary to prevent an even larger crash later. Guy is concerned that the economy may take a while to bounce back if something is broken, but highlights that the U.S. economy is the strongest and where a lot of the money in the market is. With Bitcoin and other crypto markets future closely tied to the actions of central banks, regulations, and global economic conditions, it's something to watch closely in the next few months. What do you think about the latest interview with Guy from Coin Bureau and his prediction for Bitcoin in the crypto market this year? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.